I think they'll give you a gavel.
Welcome to the regular meeting of the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners. Citizens interested in participating in the public session of this meeting, we would like to ask you to make a phone call if you're watching on uh, television today. The telephone number is 336-422-1200. That number again is 336-422-1200. If you have any comments uh, or ideas or thoughts regarding anything that's on your mind today. Well, Members of the audience are interested. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a guest in the house. <laughs> I have no clue who that is. Uh, members of the audience, and there are folks here today, and that's interesting because when uh, the vice chairman of the commissioners, Don Martin, came in, he says, can you believe it? There are actually people in the commissioner's meeting room. Right. We are delighted to have you with us. Uh, if you are interested in participating in the public session, I've just mentioned the public session for those who aren't here and would like to speak on the telephone. But if you'd like to come up and express whatever's on your mind regarding the problems and needs of Forsyth County, then we would ask you to fill out a speaker card, which, which is available from the clerk or outside of the meeting room. Give it to our the clerk to the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners, Ashley Sloop, and she'll take, I can guarantee you, very good care of you. We'll begin this meeting today with an invocation from Pastor Adam Halton from Center Grove Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Gloria Wisenhut. Please stand if you can. Pastor Halton, you may begin. Thank you, sir. Let's pray. Lord, just thank you for the opportunity that we can gather today and uh, just uh, hear the wisdom from uh, those on the board. We pray that you would give them discernment as they continue to make decisions for our county. And uh, Lord, we just pray that uh, as we come out of seasons into new seasons, that you would refresh uh, their, their hearts and their minds, that you would give them, again, discernment that is from you, and that ultimately um, we would see, through their wisdom, uh, great things ahead for our county. We say all this in your name. Bless in Jesus' name, amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This has been a somewhat unusual day for the commissioners today. We have been talking about uh, a $503 million budget spending your money. And we hope we're doing the right thing for you, and we'll try our very best. And that'll probably conclude at the latter part of next week. One of the people we've seen here today is a man who gives us a report on what's going on in the virus area is Joshua Swift. Mr. Swift is a director of the Forsyth County Public Health Department, and he is here to give us a quick update in person and in color on COVID. Good to have you with us, Joshua. Good afternoon. It's good to be back here in person. Uh, I'll ask uh, Ashley to uh, share my slides. Okay, great. You go to the next slide, please. So just a, a brief update of where we are in Forsyth County as far as COVID-19 cases. Our total cases since the beginning of the pandemic is 36,617 cases. Draw your attention to our cases over the last 14 days. That's 594 cases. So that's a number that we're always looking at just to see what our trend is. And that is about where we've been over the last month. That's averaging 42 cases per day. So that's, uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, or almost a few months ago, we were trending up, got close to 70 cases per day, uh, but that is now back leveled off uh, to 42 per day. And our total deaths since beginning is 388 from COVID-19. Next slide, please. Just uh, sharing the number of uh, vaccines administered by the Department of Public Health. Uh, since we started uh, on, I believe the date was December the 22nd, 
a few days before the Christmas holiday. We started, and since then, we've given 96,441 total doses of COVID-19 vaccine, and 61,236 individuals have completed their series. That's one dose of Johnson & Johnson, or two doses of Moderna and Pfizer. Next slide, please. This next slide is a slide you've seen many times before, looking at the hospitalizations. This is for South County residents who are hospitalized in Forsyth County hospitals. So you can see that number is now 37. Uh, that's where we've been trending over the last uh, month uh, to two months in that 40s and 30s. So it's a, a, a good place, but still there are people uh, that are in the hospital due to COVID. Next slide, please. Next slide shows those uh, deaths over time. Uh, you can see that over the last uh, two months, we've really kind of leveled off uh, having less deaths from COVID. I do think a lot of what we've seen, and you'll see in a few slides, is that the number of individuals uh, in our older population who are highest risk for hospitalization, severe illness, and death, uh, that's a very vaccinated population. Uh, over 80% of that population is vaccinated, and you can tell uh, that's helped our death rate severely decline and be much lower. Next slide. So this is the slide I was referencing looking at our vaccine distribution. Uh, you can see in the middle column the percent of the population that is partially vaccinated, and this is by subgroup. Uh, and then you can see on the far right the population that's fully vaccinated. Uh, I won't uh, repeat all of these numbers. You can see that basically each week that I share this information, the number is uh, trending up, but it's uh, not by leaps and bounds anymore. It's inch by inch that we're going up. Now you can see 31% of African Americans in Forsyth County are partially vaccinated. That's within that subgroup. 44% of white residents and 30% of Hispanic residents are partially vaccinated. Then when you get down and look at the age groups, uh, you can see 12 to 17 year olds that's our lowest group, but 12 to 15 year olds were just eligible for vaccine in the pa past few weeks. Uh, so that number is going up. We're happy to see that 18 to 24 year olds are going up to 40%, 46% of 25 to 49 year olds. And then those over 50, we're happy to see that the majority of that population is now vaccinated. Uh, we, you see overall 46% of the population, over 175,000 is partially vaccinated and 157,000 or 41% are fully vaccinated. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a uh, next slide and you can see Dr. Martin who is standing guard outside the Department of Public Health. I think Mr. Linville was there a few weeks before that and uh, all of the commissioners. But we're now taking uh, COVID vaccine walk-ups during our clinic hours. Basically anytime we're anywhere in the community, whether it's at the health department, or at a, a community event, you'll see a list of those. Uh, that list grows and change, changes by the day. Uh, we're allowing walk-ups. We also have appointments if people want that, uh, but we're trying to make it as accessible and as convenient as possible. And what you see there is basically our normal clinic hours anyway. So during those hours, we're offering the vaccine. We're also doing special clinics uh, till six on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, we're open till eight not only our normal clinic but our covid clinic on thursday evenings and we do a 9 to 12 on saturdays this is in addition uh, to events where we're out in the community and a lot of those are on evenings and weekends uh, next slide and this is my last slide and this is just meant to show you this all the places we are uh, this weekend we'll be uh, doing three events uh, in addition to that actually we'll do four events we'll be working with haynes cme church next door to the health department offering vaccine there as well as those other locations. We'll be back at the dash game, going back to the uh, schools. We appreciate the school system allowing us to come in uh, a few weeks ago. We'll be going back, offering second doses as well as first doses. So wherever we're at, we do the walk-ups, we do appointments, uh, and we're also doing first or second doses uh, to make it more accessible. Also looking at other locations, you can see we're working with uh, Cook's Flea Market. Uh, also talking, uh, thank you, Ms. Wisenhunt, uh, with um, Bowman Gray Stadium. We're hoping to be able to get there soon. So we're trying to uh, make it accessible. Uh, and that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to take any questions. Any questions for Mr. Swift? Just one comment, please, Mr. Chairman. Sure. I just want to recognize uh, Joshua Swift for being designated as our COVID hero of the week. And that rotates from one person to another, but he's done a Herculean job making sure that our communities are 
received the benefit of his efforts. So thank you very much and congratulations. Uh, I appreciate it. Appreciate the, the staff that are working hard in public health and there's been a lot of heroes. I see Todd Luck, a hero, right there taking pictures and I appreciate uh, Ms. Robinson's leadership uh, and just uh, uh, appreciate the compliments. Thank These you. reports have been very important. I think, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm on, wrong on this one, uh, Mr. County Manager, but this is the first time since the 1st of March we've had somebody that wasn't standing behind some type of plexiglass. And, <laughs> and of all the people, you're the right ones. So, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. The next item on the agenda is the public session. Uh, Ashley Sloop, Clerk to the County Commissioners. Uh, do you have any callers or speaker cards? Mr. Chairman, we have two callers and two speaker cards. Let's begin with the, speak, uh, the callers first. Sure. All right. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners public session line. This session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Katie Morawski and I live in 27103. What is your address, ma'am? Oh, 701 Magnolia Street. Thank you. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each, and a 30-second warning will be given. You may begin. Uh, I'm calling with the Triad Abolition Project and the Forsyth County Police Accountability and Reallocation Coalition. Uh, we thank you for the time, attention, and detail to not only the preliminary budget for 21 through 22, but also uh, the public workshops analyzing the next steps of the budget before it's adopted in the coming weeks or so. Hopefully next time the uh, live stream will be a lot easier to hear and won't cut in and out so much. Um, anyway, according to the uh, preliminary budget, the sheriff's office reflects a 5.5% or uh, about $2.8 million increase in uh, net county dollars compared to the F uh, fiscal year 21 adopted budget. And this budget is projected to continue increasing in the coming years. It is our hope that as these budget workshops continue, that county commissioners and managers consider thinking through how to prioritize community health over policing and incarceration as a form, <coughs> excuse me, as a form of community safety. In order to do this, we ask that you emphasize your attention to how public health, mental health, and social services add funds to the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office collaboration, and then apply this to how carceral services are pervasive and how community health is criminalized, surveilled, and not addressed with the care services and, rescue and resources. Uh, throughout the 2022 preliminary budget is evident that funds for carceral systems of public safety cross over with social, youth, and behavioral health services. When we look at our county's budget, we see a moral document from our elected officials' priorities for our community. It is clear that although you have heard the demands of your community over the past year, and while we all grieve and continue to grieve and heal from the murder of our brother, uh, Mr. John Neville, in the detention center here in Winston, uh, you refuse to listen to us and commit to impactful care center changes that will help our community and heal from the continued harms of poverty, state-sanctioned violence, and massive attempts to cover up the efforts of advocates. County Commissioners, we wish to remind you that we have been present in public sessions and the FC Park uh, has held meetings with County Commissioners Fleming El Amin and County Manager Dudley Watts. We have maintained records of all of our public comments and meetings, which are available on the Triad Abolition Project website. As community members with energy to mo mobilize demands and actions for change in our community of Forsyth County and Winston-Salem, we again demand that you continue the budget process that you actively assess how to reinvest in community care initiatives, including but not limited to prioritizing fair housing access, community-led violence prevention programs that do not include police or deputy co-respondents, co um, funding for mental health uh, initiatives that are not connected to the carceral system, yeah, such as the DA's seconds. office, the FCSO, and medical resources connected to imprisonment and detention. Thank you for your attention uh, to these matters. I yield my time. Mm -hmm. 
You are now available. Thank you. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners public session line. This session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Duck McManus. I am at 130 Secret Garden Lane, Apartment 6. Thank you. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each and a 30 second warning will be given. You may begin. I'm calling the Triad Abolition Project and the Precise County Police Accountability and Reallocation Coalition. In last week's Black, White, and Blue panel hosted by the Precise County Sheriff's Office, it was stated by multiple leaders that, that community, community members need to be energized towards addressing the root causes of violence. One action example provided was to speak up to elected officials, such as in public sessions. In a follow-up session featuring Sheriff Bobby Kimbrough and Frankie Gist, Sheriff Kimbrough emphasized that community changes should go through the sheriff's office because he has, quote, the all-star team, and, quote, money changes the game. Sheriff Kimbrough has been featured in other forms of media in recent days, saying, quote, I'm going to have to take deputies from somewhere else to bring here, so I've got to figure out where to get money over time to pay them to assist. Now what happens is when you start moving resources, something has the ability to go lack. Overall, the messaging from the sheriff during the budget process is a continued campaign for more funds towards the budget that already continues to increase. In fact, this black, white, and blue panel falsely advertised that the, that the conversation would bring communities together to address the harms in the wake of the murder of George Floyd just a year ago, but instead focused on blaming black people for violence without taking any accountability for the harms we know are perpetuated by law enforcement. Although George Floyd was named in this panel, the panelists never mentioned the name of Mr. John Neville, a man who was murdered by detention officers in the jail in the center of our own county. In the public sessions on January 21st and April 15th, we inquired of the county commissioners about the approval of a one-year contract for Hunter D. Laughlin to continue his media work for the Forsyth County Sheriff's Office Facebook news shows. In several comments, we've continued to emphasize the harms of the county budgeted media support of SCSO News and media programming. Furthermore, as we have drawn attention to in our past comments, the SCSO Facebook page continues to host harmful racist commentary, such as multiple Facebook users commenting during the Black, White, and Blue panel with racism, violence, and harm. Although the admins of the SCSO Facebook page was were asking clarifying questions and providing resources to some comments, there was no response to any of the harmful racist comments. We've noted that the preliminary budget included in the appendices, includes in the appendices a pitch to the county marketing office to, for a county marketing office you have 30 to seconds. centralize and coordinate information shared with the public. It is our hope that if a marketing office is implemented by the county, that information from the sheriff's office will not lean into what it currently is propaganda and campaigning for taxpayer funds. We do not agree with tax dollars being allocated towards law enforcement centric media when we know there are blatant inconsistencies and inconsistencies in their reporting as the truth. We demand that all taxpayer dollars that fund the FCSO news programs, share talk shows, and media panels be reallocated to other resources. We ask again, why does the sheriff's office need taxpayer funding for a Facebook page, talk shows, news programs, and media panels that continue to spread harms and false information when here in Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, we already have local news media. Man, is regularly Thank you. Um, uh, Mr. Sloop, you did a good job on those two calls. Now we have two cards if you'd like to go ahead and uh, introduce those. Sure, Mr. Chairman, we do have one more caller on the phone. Oh, I'm sorry, go right ahead then. No, that's okay. You are now available. Thank you. Thank you for calling the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners public session line. This session is for comments only and questions cannot be answered. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Robert Bailey. My, my address is 3900 Old Flat Rock Road, Kernsville, North Carolina. Would you mind repeating your name again? I didn't catch it, sir. My name is Robert 
Bailey. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Speakers will be limited to three minutes each, and a 30-second warning will be given. You may begin. Okay, I'm calling concerning the rezoning of F-1600. My property joins this land, and this land has been fertile land ever since I've lived here. And I've lived here for 70, since 1972. And I understand that it was formed before that. The county commissioners in August of 2016 signed a farmland preservation plan. If we lose farmland, we'll never ever get it back. If land is undeveloped, and someone wants to put houses on it, I don't find a problem with that. But when you start taking away farmland and put houses on it, it'll never, ever come back. I understand that this is supposed to be voted on today, and I am firmly and convict against this. I do not wish to see farmland turned into housing developments. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bailey. Okay, now, now we move to the live session of the comments, and you can may introduce those now. Mr. Chairman, our next speaker will be Joanne Allen. Please come forward. And Ms. Allen, you'll have three minutes to discuss the problems and needs that you see. Uh, Joanne Allen, P.O. Box 284 um, 27102. First of all, let me just say this. You all have been here a very, very long time. A very long time. Some of you, can you hear me okay or, or what? Here you are. This is the problem that I'm having. I do a presentation called A Plan by Design The Economic Betrayal and Corruption of Winston Salem. But guess what? Some of you all have been around so long that some of you all are also included in this presentation as well. And I'm here to let everyone know that change is coming to Winston-Salem for Scythe County. I've turned over numerous documents to the FBI, the federal government, and there's a reason for that. Winston-Salem, Forsyth County, you know, the last time I was here, I spoke to you all and I advised you all Sometimes it's time to sit down and let others come and make decisions. Because for whatever reason, the majority of you all think that your only job is just to give money to certain private nonprofit organizations, that your job is just to just give the money out. And even with that, you don't even do that correctly or in a way that it actually benefit the population of this county in this city, okay? So my point is, is that first of all, we need to talk about integrity, okay? We need to talk about integrity and the fact that you all don't represent each other up here. You represent the people of Forsyth County. You have a minute and a half. And doggone it, you all haven't done a great job of actually representing them. When was the last time any of you all put on a pair of jeans and just took a walk throughout the county to see what was going on? Is that once again because you feel like, well, you know, our job is just to just disperse the, the funds. Let me say this before I sit down. The problem is, is that, you know, when we were all younger, we used to talk about the older generation and I'm not trying to make this about age or anything, but the fact is, is that you all have not done enough. You haven't done your job. You forget what your job duties are. And we're here to remind you because this time around, it will be different. You have and with 30 the seconds. feds in, with the feds in now, hmm, let the chips fall where they may. Thank you. You still have 25 seconds. Madam uh, Clerk. 
Mr. Chairman, our next speaker is Arnita Miles. Please come forward. Mr. Miles, you'll have three minutes to discuss any of the problems, needs, or interests that's on your mind. All you have to do is introduce yourself, give your address, and you're on your way. Good afternoon, Mr. Plyler, county commissioners. I stand before you today with a humble heart. I stand before you today as a person that seeks the truth and accountability. I don't want to be here today. I am a community advocate. I'm a United States Army veteran. I'm a former law enforcement officer from this city. I received numerous phone calls from citizens of Forsyth County asking for my assistance to help them. For the past several weeks, I have received numerous, again, I say numerous phone calls about a county commissioner from District A. I have sent you, each of you, an email with those concerns. We have a county commissioner from District A that has misappropriated allegedly $47,000 meant for a nonprofit agent agency here in Winston-Salem. $47,000 that was meant for the community. I don't want to be here today. You have a minute and a half. I humbly request that you go into private session and discuss these allegations for yourselves. Seek the truth for yourselves. Seek accountability and responsibility for yourselves. Nobody wants to accuse anyone of anything, but we will have justice. We ha will have truth, and we will have accountability and responsibility. You have one minute. I thank each of you humbly for your time. I ask, we demand today that you find out the truth. County Commissioner Tanya McDaniel resigned today. Thank you, ma'am. And I'll declare the public hearing closed. Uh, before we can get into the next session, I'd like to mention zoning item F16 on our schedule today. And Commissioner Richard Linville has asked me if I would introduce him before we did this particular item, and Thank you're you, on. Yes, Thank sir. you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Uh, I have the statement I'd like to read, and it is about zoning petition F-1600. I have talked to the county attorney about this zoning petition. I have property adjoining property F-1600 zoning request. Participating in voting could be viewed as a conflict. Given all the circumstances in regard to this zoning, with much thought, I will recuse myself from voting. This third day of June 2021, and I would ask that this be a part of the minutes of this meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing on zoning petition of Jimmy Lee Barrow, zoning docket F-1600, and set forth in agenda item number two. Ashley Sloop, clerk to the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners. Have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? Mr. Chairman, we received a total of eight comments for F-1600. All right. I declare the public hearing closed unless our county attorney says we need to recognize those eight. 
Uh, no, I believe you've received those comments already. Um, the public hearing was, uh, I believe, two weeks ago. Yes, we did that. Okay, thank you. I declare the public hearing closed. Do I hear a motion and a second? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I'd like to make a motion that uh, zoning map amendment F-1600 be approved on the basis of the following. The proposed zoning map amendment as petitioned by Jimmy Lee Barrow to rezone 33.41 acre piece of property from agriculture and RS-20 to RS-30 residential single family 30,000 square foot minimum lot size is consistent with the recommendations of the legacy comprehensive plan and reasonable or in the public best interest because one, the subject property is an undeveloped farmland track located at 3010 Old Flat Rock Road on the east side of Reedsville Road and west side of Old Flat Rock Road, north of Vance Road, and is adjacent to land zone agriculture and RS-20, with adjacent uses being agriculture and large lot single family housing. Two, RS-30 zoning is intended to accommodate single family detached dwellings on approximately three quarter acre lots in areas without access to public water and sewer and is intended for growth management areas four and five. The subject property is adjacent to properties with similar zoning as that proposed and will have access to public water but not public sewer. And four, the subject property is located in growth management area five rural area which is consistent with RS-30 zoning and the density of housing allowed would be consistent with the Northeast area study and with the surrounding area. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? If not, all in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is one, day, on, sorry. One, one opposition. There's one in opposition. Who was the? Who was the? You? It was me. Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I voted oh, you no. didn't say it loud enough. Okay. I voted no. All right. So, <laughs> so now we have one abstention, one negative vote, which only leaves five of us, which means we've approved by five to nothing. Five to one. Finally got it right, didn't we? Third item on the agenda is another public hearing on the zoning petition of David G. Williams, zoning docket F-1601, and set forth in agenda item number three. Ashley Sloop, clerk of the county commissioners. Have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? Mr. Chairman, we received one comment for F-1601, and right. it is attached in your documentation. Okay, thank you. And I'll declare the public hearing closed. So I hear a motion and a second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, that zoning map amendment F-1601 be approved on the basis of the following. The proposed special use zoning map amendment as petitioned by William Land Trust, David G. William Ayers, um, to rezone a 19.85 acre piece of property from RS-40 to NOS, residential building, single family offices and combined use is inconsistent with the recommendations of the legacy comprehensive plan, but is re reasonable or in the public best interest because one, the subject property is mostly undeveloped wooded, is a mostly developed, uh, undeveloped wooded track with a single family home located on the south side of Stars Ferry between Stars Ferry Trail and Stars Crossing Lane and is adjacent to land zone G1, agriculture, RS-30, and RS-40, with adjacent units uses being agriculture, large lot residential, and general industrial. No zoning, NO zoning, is intended for every low intensity office uses within um, converted single family detached units located along major or minor thoroughfares, which may serve as a transition between residential and office uses. And NO zoning is intended for growth management areas two, three, and four. Three, the zoning, the subject property is not adjacent to properties with similar zoning as that proposed, but the proposed low density uses are generally compatible with the uses permitted on properties in the vicinity. The property is located on a minor thoroughfare with ample capacity, and the property will have access to public water, but not public sewer. And four, 
The subject property is located in Growth Management Area 5, Rural Area, which is inconsistent with the NO zoning. However, the proposed low density uses proposed and low anticipated daily traffic count are consistent with the uses and rural nature of the surrounding area. And the proposed uses are less intensive than that allowed under the current zoning. And this approval is deemed an amendment to the legacy comprehensive plan. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Yeah, I got one for the attorney. Is this a spot zone, Gordon? No, it's not a spot zoning because there's actually um, industrial use across from it, from Styers Ferry Road. And also, as uh, Commissioner Martin indicated, um, because the, of the current zoning, you could have, say, 19 houses there. So this use would actually be a lot less intensive than what is already allowed there. All in favor of Dr. Martin's motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next item on the agenda, a public hearing on the Public Art 2020-30, Winston-Salem for Scythe County Plan. Madam Clerk, Ashley Sloop, have you received any comments on this matter in favor or in opposition to the matter? Mr. Chairman, we have not received any comments. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a motion and a second? Move to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Alamine. Second. Second by Commissioner Tanya McDaniel. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. The sixth item on the agenda is a resolution recognizing June 15th, 2021 as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Forsyth County. And we have several people here today to accept this resolution. Vice Chairman Martin, would you please read and present the resolution to the following? And if if you don't mind, I'd like to ask several people to come forward to uh, appear at the lectern. If you'd like to go down there and present that resolution, Dr. Martin, that'd be fine. From the Department of Social Services, Victor Eisler, Rick Hall, Sobita Dolphus, Hank Kennedy, Age Friendly Forsyth, Sam Matthews. Sam, it's good to have you with us today. He runs the Shepherd Center. Teresa Hoffman Mark Maker and David Davenport. Please gather around the Vice Chairman. We're delighted you're here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a motion, oh, excuse me, I brought the wrong thing with me. I brought the wrong thing. Which one did I skip? Did bring the proclamation. Before you read, Dr. Martin, I'm the clerk to the county commissioner says we missed one person, so we need to get that. No, no, no. Let him go ahead. No, we're, we're good. We, oh. we, we have an, she's <laughs> talking about an, what right, I had in my good. hand, which yeah, is the yeah. wrong thing. Okay. Um, this is a resolution recognizing June 15, 2021 as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Forsyth County, North Carolina. Whereas older adults deserve to be treated with respect and dignity, to enable them to serve as leaders, mentors, volunteers, and vital participating members in our communities. Whereas in 2006, the International Network for the Prevention of Elder Abuse, in support of the United Nations International Plan of Action, proclaimed a day to recognize the significance of elder abuse as a public health and human rights issue. Whereas 2021 marks the 15th annual World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, and its recognition will promote a better understanding of abuse and neglect of older adults. Whereas the Forsyth County Board of the Commissioners and the Forsyth County Department of Social Services recognizes the importance of taking action to raise awareness, prevent and address elder abuse. Whereas our population is living longer and we are presented with an opportunity to think about our collective needs and futures as a nation. Whereas ageism and social isolation are major causes of elder abuse in the United States, and whereas it is a shared responsibility 
to ensure that proper social structure exists so people can retain community and societal connections, reducing the likelihood of abuse. All right. Page two is stuck to page one. My elder side is coming out here. Just, there we go. Sorry. Um, whereas preventing abuse of older adults through maintaining and improving social support like senior, citizens, senior centers, human services, and transportation will allow everyone to continue to live as independently as possible and contribute to the life and vibrancy of our community. Whereas Forsyth County Department of Social Services recognizes age-friendly Forsyth as a community alliance that engages and informs aging adults and community partners to create a livable community through collaboration, strategic planning, and their con contribution is greatly appreciated. And Age Friendly Forsyth advocates for an age-friendly community where aging adults can live their best lives and promotes connections within the aging services system through the Aging Services Planning Committee by offering networking opportunities and educational presentations on key aging-related issues such as elder abuse. And whereas Forsyth County Department of Social Services serves to protect older adults experiencing mistreatment, but recognizes that protection against these, uh, protection against abuse begins with awareness of this issue within one community, our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Forsyth County Board of Commissioners hereby recognizes June 15, 2021 as World Elder Abuse Awareness Day in Forsyth County and encourages all citizens and community partners to consider how they can promote awareness of the issues of elder abuse and to support efforts to promote valuable elder, protect valuable elderly adults. I'd like to make that motion, Mr. Chairman. I'll second the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And I might point out that when uh, the Commissioner uh, Martin did present the resolution to the commissioners and to those in Forsyth County, I happen to have in front of me a monitor, and I can see the picture of all of you standing there. And I think if you, if you like me, you would enjoy watching the reruns of this particular meeting over and over and over so you can see how good you look on television. I'm delighted to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you all. I almost feel like we need to have some cake and maybe some ice cream and... <laughs> Oh man, they're getting a still picture made. Isn't that wonderful? That's good. Don, you could be able to run for office again. <laughs> Thank you again, folks. Glad you're here. Next item on the agenda is another public hearing on the zoning petition of Tammy Weevil and Timothy Weevil, zoning docket 1602, set forth on agenda item number four. Ashley Sloop. Clerk to the County Commissioners, have you received any comments in favor or in opposition to this matter? Mr. Chairman, we have received six comments and they have all been delivered to you. Okay, thank you. Then I'll declare the public hearing closed. Do we hear a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. I'd like to move that Zoning Map Amendment F-1602 be approved on the basis of the following. The proposed special use zoning map amendment to as petitioned by Tammy F. Weevil and Timothy J. Weevil to rezone a 10 acre piece of property from agriculture to LIS building contractors, general building contractors, heavy office, heavy offices and warehousing with a special intensive development allocation is consistent with the recommendations of the legacy comprehensive plan and reasonable are in the public interest because one, the subject property is an undeveloped farmland and wooded track located at 4545 High Point Road, south of Interstate 74, and is adjacent to land zoned GIS and agriculture. LI zoning is primarily intended to accommodate 
limited manufacturing, wholesaling, warehousing, research and development, and related commercial and service activities, which have limited effects on adjacent properties and is intended for growth management areas one, two, three, and four, and metro activity centers. Three, the subject property is adjacent to properties with industrial zoning and use and will have access to public water, but not sewer. The subject property is located along a major thoroughfare with ample capacity in growth management area four, which is consistent with LIS zoning, and the property is located across High Point Road from the Martin Marietta, Marietta Quarry and Laughlin Concrete. Five, the subject property is within the Abbott Creek um, Watershed 3 um, Water Supply Watershed, um, which limits development within the watershed to 24% of the property unless an SIDA um, is granted by the county. And the applications, the applicants have requested an SIDA in order to allow them to build upon 51% of the property and the proposed use would be consistent with adjacent industrial uses, would provide a significant economic impact and meet other SIDA requirements. I will second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Now for the rest of the agenda, our county manager. Dudley Watts. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, board members and staff and guests. We do have some business items for consideration this afternoon. We'll try to get on through them. It's been a long day, I know, for, for all of you. Um, so we'll dive into agenda item seven, which is a resolution supporting the eligibility for and nomination of the Elizabeth and Bowman Gray Junior House for the National His Register of Historic Places. Um, uh, your, uh, your support for this would allow this to be forwarded to the North Carolina National Register Advisory Committee to consider the nomination, and that'll happen on June 10th, 2021. Questions? Motion to approve. approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second. Second by Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, agenda item eight is approval of the minutes for the meeting of May 6, 2021 and May 20th, 2021. Motion. To move. Motion to approve by Commissioner Don Martin. Second. Second by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Agenda item nine is an amendment to the FY 2021 Debt Service Fund to appropriate $29,200,000 of 2021 A and 2021 B limited obligation bond proceeds for the refunding of 2009 and 2012 limited obligation funds in the 2019 PNC bank installment finance agreement. There is a little something that's changed to this, so I apologize, but I need to turn it over to Lee Plunkett to review this one real quickly. You don't have to speak. Commissioner Kaplan's already moved <laughs> approval. I appreciate that. It's a clear uh, signal here. That's right. <laughs> so yeah, this was an accounting oversight on my part. Uh, I had one piece in, I needed all three. And so this uh, increases the amount to um, refund all three pieces, and it's really just an accounting entry to run through us back out to the bondholders. So that's it. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> motion, to, motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Agenda item 10 is an amendment to the FY 2021 budget ordinance. It appropriates $40,000 in committed fund balance to the library for the purchase of technology. These were some donations that were received when the project was under construction, and, and um, we just earmarked them separately to honor the uh, who, those folks who gave the gift. Questions? Vote to approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. Second by Commissioner Tanya McDaniel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 11 is an amendment to the 2021 budget ordinance that appropriates operation fan relief program funding allocation to DHHS, to, I'm sorry, to DSS on the amount of $3,275. Questions? Motion to approve by Commissioner Tanya McDaniel. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming L. Amin. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item 12 is a resolution authorizing and funding positions to be utilized for paid internship partnership with Greater Winston, Inc. It is the Aspire Internship Program. Uh, the participants in this will come from Title I schools in Forsyth County, and it is mostly funded by the Greater Winston, Inc. effort. Questions? Move to approve. Motion to approve. Commissioner Fleming Elamine. Second by Commissioner Tanya McDaniel. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
Uh, agenda item 13 is a resolution awarding a contract for computerized maintenance management system. It was bid and the lowest responsible bidder was Dude Solutions uh, in, a, in an initial amount not to exceed $87,608.26. Questions? Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin and Commissioner Gloria Wisenhunt. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 14 is a resolution awarding and authorizing execution of a contract for purchase of printing consumables toner for Scythe County General Services. This was bid the lowest responsible bidder was RASIC computer system in an amount not to exceed $115,455. Questions? Approval. Approve. Motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming Alamine, second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 15 is resolution awarding and authorizing execution of a contract for the purchase of paper and envelope supplies for Forsyth County General Services. This was competitively bid. The lowest responsible bidder is BW Paper Company. <laughs> okay. Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Don Martin. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 16 is resolution awarding a contract to Law Enforcement Services Group uh, for pre and post hire psychological medical services for the Sheriff's Department in an amount not to exceed $90,000. Uh, questions? I have one comment. Yes, sir. Um, I did speak with uh, uh, Randy Hunsecker before we started, and um, as he indicated last week, um, basically approval of this contract has a 30-day cancellation on it, notice, and that they actually are, the Sheriff's Office is actually going to take a look at some other possible suppliers of the, of the screening services, um, and if they were successful in that, um, and have a different package that they would come back to us. Um, with that said, I'll make a motion for approval. Motion to approve by Commissioner Don Martin. Second. Second by Commissioner Tanya McDaniel and Fleming Alameen. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Agenda item 17 is a resolution authorizing the grant of a right of way entrance agreement to North by Northwest Consulting Incorporated to access real property located at 400 West Haynes Mill Road. Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second by Commissioner Richard Linville. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 18 is a resolution authorizing execution of an assignment of hangar lease at Smith Reynolds Airport from Truist Bank to Mount Arrow Properties LLC. Um, maybe the county attorney have any update on that? Are you ready to go? Yeah, there was uh, the only update is that I did send out a letter this week, uh, both by email and U.S. mail, to both Truist and Mount Arrow and, and gave them a copy of this resolution and outlined the county's position. Motion to approve by Commissioner Ted Kaplan. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 19 is a resolution approving refunds by the tax assessor collector in the amount of $1,332.49. Motion to approve by Commissioner Gloria Wisenhunt. Second. Second by Commissioners Tanya McDaniel and Fleming Elamine. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Two reports. You've got the contribution based benefit cap report and the human resources report for the month of March 2021. Questions? Move to receive reports. Motion to receive the reports from Commissioner Richard Linville. Second. Second by Commissioner Fleming Alamine and Don Martin. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Item 22 was an added item. It is a resolution authorizing publication of an offer to purchase county real owned, county owned real property by negotiated advertisement. Uh, offer advertisement upset bid procedure. Kirby Robinson has an update on this one, so I'll turn it yes, to sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Board. Um, unfortunately, my, my update is not uh, great information or uh, great news. Uh, the bidder for this, uh, this particular property has um, withdrawn their offer uh, to purchase, and that's really due to some business-specific issues that really they developed in the course of evaluating the property. Um, the, you know, the board has acted uh, to direct the manager to solicit fair market value offers for the property. So I think where we are now, if you still desire uh, to sell that property, we can put it essentially back on the market. Uh, we can leave it open-ended uh, for offers on the property. I, I think our suggestion would be that we clarify the property is sold as is, uh, that if the board does continue uh, to want to sell the property, we accept uh, bids in the amount of the net cash offer or payment to the county, and the minimum uh, bid that we discussed previously was $787,000 uh, or more, uh, which is the current tax value for the property. Uh, and then we would, um, it, we would also require the bidder, in order to place that offer, to deposit 5% uh, before we bring that to the board. 
I'm happy to answer any questions the board He's has. He's happy to answer any of our questions. I, I'd be happy to continue to advertise it. <laughs> so I, I think our, our recommendation is to, um, just to leave it open, uh, leave it open and as, as we would other property uh, that is surplus and if an offer comes through comes through we'll 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 continue to advertise it sort of through our normal channels and hope that I, I believe a buyer's out there I think it'll be forthcoming and so I just wouldn't put any time frame on that and if that's okay maybe by motion uh, all right we, just, we could do that well I mean you're just gonna leave it there forever and ever you're not gonna put a time limit on it uh, I don't think it'll be forever and ever, <laughs> well, but um, no, we're leaving it open forever. And yeah, ever. <laughs> it just what it would be is whoever shows up, you know, whoever shows up, we'd we'd we could it is surplus property, by right? Of right, and so it's available for sale, much like you do with your house. Yeah. I mean, you could do a so Kirby, all we can do is say you've got a beautiful voice, you did a great job, <laughs> just keep <laughs> keep going on until something happens. <laughs> Mr. Stone, I have one question for Kirby, please. Here, go right ahead. Kirby, the other property on Fifth and Highland yes, that we discussed, have you been in touch with those two uh, bidders? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Okay. I work with the clerk to the board, and we have two presentations scheduled uh, for you. I think one on the 17th and the one on the 24th okay. uh, to come in. Yes, sir. Thank you. And, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Kirby. Appreciate it. All right. Is that it? That is it. I'll, I'll take... Um, You're through. Should we get a motion on the recommendation, or, or, or I think do we have consensus? to vote on? We have to vote on that. No, particularly if you don't want to. We'll just, we don't want to. Okay. All right. Very good. Then I am done. Now, now before we leave here, a couple things. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this meeting, we're this board is dealing with five hundred and three million dollars of all your money out there in television land and in this room. And we're going to meet again what Monday morning at nine o'clock to continue the conversations. No, no, Monday. Monday is at two o'clock here, and so we, there will be. And that, I think this is important. So, uh, the community, please come and participate, and uh, we will hear public comments on Monday at two o'clock in this room, and then um, from that Tuesday morning, we'll be back in this room at nine a.m. to really start the deliberations. And we've got that scheduled as long as we need month, Tuesday, as long as we need Wednesday, and as long as we need Thursday up to a meeting. At Two and so, but the magic number is two p.m. and not nine, right? Yeah, don't be here at nine. I, uh, <laughs> two breakfast. Two, two would be great. And are we going to? Um, will there be a? There will both be an a, a, a remote call-in opportunity and a in-person call-in opportunity for folks who want to participate. If this is a considered a, an, an official voting t voting thing, then we ought to do that. This is just a public it's hearing. A public hearing. I know. That's that what is saying. correct. Depends, huh? Public session will occur just like it did today. Okay. Yes. Okay. See, so that's that is why Ashley Sloop is where she is today. Smartest girl I've ever met. <laughs> I think that's about all. Ashley, is that it? Do we have anything else? Mr. Chairman, if you will make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> well, um, so moved. Uh, thank you, Richard. <laughs> second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> second twice. The second by Ted Kaplan. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.